Hello, welcome, namaste, and uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna talk now uh, about chakras a bit, and I'm also gonna plug my chakra balancing. I'm not gonna try to convince you, but it's very good. It's a paid service, and uh, those of you who think that uh, so-called spiritual services should not be paid for ever, Please wake up. I'm gonna talk about this in another video, maybe. It's all my experience. Uh, there's nothing uh, just uh, that I read, uh, maybe a percent or two, but it's it's what I know. So, uh, about chakras, about the main chakras and how I balance them and see them. The chakra balancing I've been doing for about a decade now, and I offer through uh, the several websites, and um, I will list them in the description below. Uh, and in, and uh, I do it over distance uh, with the aid of uh, online messengers and over the phone or in person. Uh, almost always a better option, but it's uh, in some ways even more effective over distance actually. Um, so what I do focuses primarily on the lower six to seven chakras, which are root, sexual, solar, heart, throat, third eye, and some people have another main chakra between solar and sexual. The crown chakra and the chakras uh, above the crown and the chakras below the root chakra harmonize themselves um, on their own, so to speak, as far as this treatment is concerned, anyway, most of the time. Harmonizing the main chakras improves the functioning of smaller chakras, and while focused mostly on the strength of the chakra, or its radiation or shining, on its functioning and uh, freedom from no longer needed aspects, this in turn affects its ability to perceive. They go hand in hand. The processes also have to do with the rotation speed of the chakra. While in most cases, <clears throat> in my experience, one or two or more chakras of a human being need strengthening or of an animal, needs strengthening. Uh, on occasion, the activity of a chakra, or several of them, has to be uh, turned a bit lower so that uh, harmonious flow of energy throughout the chakra system may be achieved, impacting all areas of the functioning of the human body, the human experience. The uh, direction of the rotation of a chakra, or several of them, can easily and almost immediately be altered, but in my experience such a step is rarely advisable, or rather is best executed over a period of time, rather than all at once. I can do both when needed. Although in most humans their physical gender <clears throat> determines the rotational direction of each chakra, the direction uh, that each chakra is turning is quite individual, uh, pertaining to each human being and its needs, his or her needs. While in most cases each main chakra rotates in a direction opposite to that of its neighboring main chakras, this is not the case in each human being, where two neighboring main chakras can rotate in the same direction, both chakras clockwise or both chakras counterclockwise. This is not necessarily a defect. However, determining the direction of the rotation of a chakra, which is quite easy to do and there are several ways of finding out, can be a useful diagnostic or informative tool, uh, can be used for further focus, healing, development work. Uh, the term main chakra is of course customary, traditional and quite arbitrary and can easily be replaced with a big chakra or carrier chakra or even root chakra if that name didn't conflict with one of the names of the bottommost main chakra. 
Are you wondering what chakra is in itself, actually? I'll give a few ways of approaching the understanding of chakras at the end of this talk. Now, a bit more on uh, what I offer in chakra work, apart from balancing or harmonizing your chakra systems, although it all serves that. Uh, I can provide you with further information on chakras as needed, or if you wish, including their shape, size, rotation, speed, function, purpose, uh, in general, or uh, of your main chakras, and uh, on, on its color, on uh, what you yourself uh, can do to uh, maintain uh, their correct function and balance, etc. I uh, and others can provide both uh, general information about the functioning of the chakras and specific data on how your own chakras are working or not working. Um, but I fix or help fix that when it's not working, uh, whatever may be the case. And uh, I do not promise that I will give everyone uh, all the details about how each chakra looks, uh, but I can say how well it works and I can balance it, uh, harmonize and improve it, heal it, help it, help clean it and more, and help you do your own work. The so-called minor chakras uh, that are of uh, particular interest to me uh, include the numerous energy centers in the head, especially in the brain, and the centers uh, at knees and elbows, and in hands and feet. And there are other chakras that are not quite minor, but uh, although lesser than the seven or eight main ones, they nevertheless uh, direct energy to and from uh, the chakras that are even smaller. Individual, as chakra balancing always is, uh, the average time of this procedure is about 20 minutes, uh, but it does vary from one human being to another and from one animal to another. And, uh, and plants also have chakras. Planets have chakras. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, this healing, uh, about 20 minutes or so, but it can be shorter or longer. Uh, sometimes it leads to other healing steps, as, uh, because my healing is mostly intuitive, and I am almost only intuitive, and I let my hands and my body do the work, and allow the presence, or more evolved holy beings through whom the presence works more easily, to work through me. I can, when needed, provide more info on that process as well, if you like. I also offer Reiki attunements, which, uh, however, have to be conducted in person, not via the net or by phone, or an online messenger. And those classes include teaching or passing on whatever is needed for you to do all or most of the work I described above and more. Now. The chakras above the physical head, starting with the crown one, and those below the feet, and some consider, rightly to some extent in my view, the feet chakra to be part of the root chakra, this is where it gets really interesting. But of course that's my view, and that is a view that uh, has to do with the specific stage of the development of the individual, or of, to use an expression dear to me, the individual stream of life. Uh, we can work on that too. Uh, those chakras have to do with the higher or deeper levels of dim or dimension, uh, dimensions of connection to the universal being, uh, non-egoic, so to speak, and to Mother Earth. But uh, that is a very simplified statement, and uh, we usually have to start our evolution or our work uh, on chakras uh, with the main seven or eight chakras in the body. Now, since I seem to have gotten a bit carried away uh, writing, talking about one of my favorite subjects, chakras, I might as well add now that the word chakra is a Sanskrit uh, neutral noun, which can easily be, easily be translated as a vortex, whirlpool, cycle, but also as sovereignty, department, multitude, host, realm, etc., or even army, although uh, most frequently or traditionally used Western translations seem to be disc 
or wheel, which in my view do not do the word, nor the phenomenon of chakra much justice, nor does chakra in my view look like only a disc or a wheel as such. And there are quite a few other possible translations of the Sanskrit noun of the neutral gender that I find interesting and are useful. Uh, not to mention quite a number of related adjectives as well as a few verbs. But do your own research on that if you're interested, or perhaps we can talk about that later. Uh, as for me, I probably would pick uh, vortex or cycle or even whirlpool if I had to choose only one Western word. Chakras, uh, of course, also have to do with the Kundalini and its uh, downward twin energy with ascension, uh, with the basis on which is built um, our physical body and indeed most bodies that each human being has, if not all of them. In other words, they are the basis of the physical body. It's built on them in some ways. And thus also they have to do with aura, uh, with uh, interpersonal communication, with uh, communication with one's higher self, with communication as such, uh, with creativity, etc., etc. Aura, by the way, seems to come from the Greek word aura, meaning breath, uh, breeze, air in motion, uh, raise, lift, or to hold suspended. And uh, chakras are also pretty much all about motion. The universe is about motion. There's nothing static really anywhere. So, also the usual number of uh, the main human chakras, seven, is often viewed as the number of completeness, perfection, fullness, good fortune, holiness, and so on. So uh, it's no accident that uh, the week has seven days and there are other sevens in our uh, world. Now, numerous ancient as well as modern mantras, frequencies, sounds, pictures, mudras, uh, colors, movements, postures, and other techniques and tools have been designed, I'm looking at my posture now, have been designed and used to improve the functioning of the whole chakra system as well as the functioning of uh, specific chakras or chakra groups. While, for example, the uh, mantra Om Mani Padme Hum uh, can harmonize the entire chakra system. Uh, the mantra Ekongar Satana Oshire Vahe Guru can sometimes enhance the energy flow in the solar chakra, thus contributing to its healing and the healing of issues related to the solar plexus. But uh, an uh, overextended use of the mantra may activate the chakra to excess. How much is too much? That is absolutely individual. Now, on the flip side, uh, negative influences are often designed to target or damage specific chakras, implant them with programs, or abuse them otherwise, uh, sometimes for quite a while. Uh, but this is a vast topic I won't develop much further here. But I will say that there is defense available in case of any attack, and that there is healing or transformation available in any case of uh, chakra damage or any damage indeed chakra trauma trauma or any trauma now individual identity is the individual stream of life sense is uh, connected usually to the heart center or the solar chakra or to the stomach cent uh, stomach center but of course uh, different people may sense the center of their I uh, elsewhere. The heart center seems particularly important for a number of reasons. Uh, this importance seems indicated uh, by the heart being the first organ visible during the development of the human embryo on the physical level and embryos of other earthly creatures. Brain comes later only, which may be taken to show that the heart is in a way closer uh, to the only reality than the brain. The uh, often used numbering of chakras starting with the root as uh, the first chakra and ending with the crown chakra as the seventh has some uh, basis, but uh, to a great degree it seems arbitrary to me or uh, based on specific stages of the human uh, evolution. I will also mention now that most higher animals, dogs, horses, cats, etc., 
have chakra systems quite similar to that of human beings uh, with perhaps a bit more power in the areas of uh, nose, ears and eyes, the senses and in feet, uh, touch, perception, strength, connection to earth uh, especially the last one I think but uh, this is a big topic and interesting and lovely to me but uh, I've been focusing mostly on human chakras in this talk so the difference between human and animal is, is nearly or completely negligible in some respects now. Now, uh, I've been talking uh, for a while now, uh, more than I thought that I would, but uh, all this is just a tiny bit of the vast knowledge of the chakra universes, uh, just scratching the surface, so to speak. And on the flip side, and as a warning of sorts, I uh, have met a number. I have met a number of people, or spiritual adepts, spiritual seekers, who seem to have over-identified their growth, or their evolution, or so-called spiritual development with their chakras. Uh, apparently, excessive focus on one's chakras at a certain point of one's development. Not even to mention the mere uh, theoretical knowledge of chakras is uh, just as retarding as any other egoic uh, excess. Mere knowledge does not necessarily mean proper use. And uh, mere knowledge of how something works, and usually limited knowledge of that, uh, does not mean, uh, mind-based often, does not mean uh, that we use it to the best benefit, or uh, that's how we can look at it anyway. I've met uh, demons, and vampires embodied or appearing as humans who could control their chakras very nicely when they wanted to, making them shine nicely, uh, almost perfect or close enough to deceive, uh, deceive uh, those who would be deceived. Now, love is important here always, not just the brain in, in discriminating in living. Now, the, 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 the answer that I promised, or one of the answers anyway, um, of uh, what actually chakra is, in my view. Now, uh, chakra, uh, chakras are multidimensional energy centers and gateways. They are stargates and free energy generators. Uh, they are seats of consciousness. Seat, that's another good name for a chakra. Uh, so anyway, that's just a few more ways of putting it. You have to find out for yourself. Uh, chakras, in a sense, are the essence of us on the level of created existence and individualized existence, the human existence. Our uh, true essence, of course, is much finer, more rapidly vibrating. And, and in the end, uh, or in the beginning, uh, beyond vibration, before vibration, uncreated, free of all properties, both being and non-being, that which comes before I am, so to speak, the, the unknowable knowing, that which cannot be conveyed, conveyed by words alone. So, the picture of a hermit sitting in a cave who never read any book, uh, uh, but will nevertheless figure out the, the, or be informed of, of the workings of his energy centers when needed comes to mind now. And uh, but you know, if we have books, if we have some uh, someone to 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 help us discover some information, that's fine too. Of course, we don't we don't have to be hermits, all of us, for sure. But I find it to be an interesting example, anyway. So, uh, one more brief note in closing, but I already mentioned that. Uh, in other words, uh, that the properties or characteristics of our chakra balance and their functioning directly affects all or most aspects of our experience on Earth and elsewhere. So, whether you work with me or by yourself or with somebody else, uh, if you feel attracted to looking into chakras, then please do. If not, don't. So thank you for listening. And uh, so please do fully and lovingly use what resonates, drop what doesn't. 
and please do not accept uh, anything I uh, write or say automatically as the truth. There is no one single truth unless we're talking metaphorically about that nameless being with all names. Uh, but uh, check it out if it resonates, uh, research, verify, find out, uh, find out for yourself what serves your stream of life and uh, research with as much joy and love as you can and with your heart rather than just the brain. Do what you enjoy. Love and best wishes to you. Namaste. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you found this video useful, do consider donating uh, or cooperating. I will uh, uh, put, put some details about that into the description below, below the video on YouTube and maybe some more information. Namaste.